Well, hey folks, welcome to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Layout. Um, this will be update number 12 and uh, not a whole lot going on again. Sorry, I haven't had much time down here in the man cave, the train layout room, but uh, uh, I did want to talk a little bit today about wiring um, and some of the uh, things that you can do leading up to your build, you know, when you're wiring and what you can do beforehand, or in my case, what I have to do afterwards. So, uh, ran a couple of operation videos for you, um, just so you can uh, see the trains running a little bit. Uh, but, uh, we'll, uh, switch to our man on the street view and, uh, go ahead and talk a little bit about wiring today. It's going to be a short video. Like I said, I don't have a whole lot uh, of updates for you. It's just been busy, but a uh, couple things uh, that I thought might be interesting to talk about today. So let's get right to it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about wiring. Uh, right now, I have uh, very little uh, permanent wiring going on. Uh, a little bit um, for some of the switches, like right here. This switch is permanently wired. I've got the wire running down through the table, connecting underneath. This one has not yet been wired up. And uh, same for over here. Uh, this one's not been wired up, but I have one here that is. So this can be um, switched back and forth with the throw of a switch. And the way I've got that wired is down under here, which uh, that's actually gonna change and come out beyond this board, but I left it for right now. It's connected to a train transformer under there that's running AC power. That controls the switch tracks. The black box is my 12 volt power supply, and that's what's powering these street lamps and the lights for the Woodland Scenics plug and play uh, lights inside. So, um, underneath, it's just ba basically right now I've got wires going up through the table. Those are for the track wiring there. This is all going to be uh, straightened up, cleaned up when I get ready to do the majority of the wiring. So, I've got one, two, three, four buildings right here, plus those two street lights on the docks that need to all be wired under here. This one is already done. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buildings in the downtown area. Plus there's gonna be street lights, which I've spoken to you before. I've got these little three volt street lamps and I'm going to have them spaced probably one on the corner maybe one about the middle of this building and so on and I'll use that flexi edge ruler to lay them out uh, maybe 25 feet apart to scale HO scale uh, size or 30 feet I don't know I'll just go with what uh, looks good to me. Now those buildings up there have been wired. I wired those previously, which I've shown you. Because of that being so high up inside the mountain, and basically it's a void space underneath where the tunnels are, I didn't want to have wires going down and interfering at all with the tunnels. So before I ever laid any plaster cloth, I wired that up. And I'll show you a picture right here of how I did that. So as you can see, I ran the wires up through here. It's behind the paper that create this mountain and then come up through that platform. So that's so it wouldn't interfere with that. And then of course, they come out under here. Now, when I built this table, this is a sacrificial tabletop, it's just a piece of half inch plywood. And I well knew that I was gonna be drilling through it and connecting wires underneath. So here's where, I had to make a decision. The problem is, and I'll show you a picture here 
of how this platform where the, the buildings sit is raised up from the base of the kit. So as you can see from the construction of that, this base is about two and a half or three inches higher than the base of the layout. So that created a problem. How am I gonna run wires to these buildings before I did all the plaster cloth if I wasn't sure where each building would be and which street light? <laughs> so if you're building and you know exactly where your buildings are going to be and your street lights, well, then you can go ahead and lay your wires out any way you want and have them all there. So when you're done with the plaster cloth, each building has its wire. Well, I didn't do that. I decided what I would do after it's all done is go ahead and drill all the way down through, feed my wires down and connect everything underneath. So that's what I'm going to do. And there's a variety of nice long drill bits on the market. Um, this is a, uh, I think it's a 3 16 very long drill bit. I can use that for small three volt wires like this here, um, but I kind of prefer to use quarter inch. And this is a, a quarter inch drill bit and it's pretty big. It's for running electrical. And um, that allows enough room for me to pull the wires through. Now, for these little street lights, there's not enough wire on the end here to, to reach, excuse me, to reach all the way through to the bottom easily. So before I set these in place, I'm gonna extend these wires, um, make them probably another 10 inches long with feeder wire so that uh, they'll reach all the way down underneath. And then I'll go ahead and place these street lamps, get them all in there. And then what I'll do, and this is what I did for the station here, is each, each building, I will drill a hole like this. And now you can see, I've got my stick on light down in there, that's Woodland Scenics, but I had to drill a fairly large hole for the plug to fit through. So if you're not using plug and play, you can just drill the smaller holes and feed your wires. But if you're doing plug and play, you've got to be a little bit larger to accommodate that plug. So I went with uh, this drill bit here, which is a pretty, pretty big stout drill bit. And uh, this is three eighths and uh, went ahead and drilled that. And, uh, you know, I figured with uh, this building uh, covering it and maybe once I get everything done, I'll have some interior stuff in there hiding it so you don't actually see the hole from outside, but it's not very noticeable at this point. But that allows you to get those thick plugs through there. Um, so that's what I'll be doing with each of these buildings so that each one can be controlled individually with the, uh, the, the light control on the hub. Each one has its own dial so, you know, I'll have eight different holes here and eight, eight different lights all controlled with a hub so they can all be different, you know. And uh, so that'll be quite a bit of drilling. So then what my plan is, because trying to climb under there and then solder or connect things, you know, looking up, working upside down, it's going to be pretty difficult. So... I have a wild plan here, <laughs> and that involves, I'm going to be taking everything off that is movable <laughs> and not tied down, and then I'm going to make sure that my layout is secured on here, which, you know, it, it, I'm going to just, you know, tie it down, use some clamps like here, clamp it to the table, because this is just now, I can, I can lift this up if I want to but I'm going to have it clamped down. I'm going to slide my table back and I'm going to tip it all that way to expose the bottom of the table. 
And once I have all those wires down under there, that's gonna be all this area, street lights, I have multicolored street lights, street lamps, and all this wiring, then I can get up under there and make it all sanitary, nice, run all my wires nicely, solder everything, use connectors, run a bus. I'm gonna run a bus and have everything connect to it. And let me show you a couple of those connectors that I bought, and that's what I'm intending to do. Okay, so here we are on the bench, and these are the, the bus blocks that I bought. I think I got them on Amazon, and I've got this connector uh, screwed in to each one. So that essentially makes everything that uh, these blocks uh, are all connected. So if I connect one here, one here, one here, they're all going to get positive uh, power. So I've got obviously positive, and then I've got one for the negative. So once I run power, positive, negative to each one of these, then I can go ahead and connect positive. All these different ones can be positive wires and all these negative, and that will all be mounted nicely under the table so that I can run all the power for those street lamps. Now, for the Woodland Scenics, these are the stick-on lights, and uh, these are the ones I was talking about. Let me see if I can get one open here. These are the ones that have... Well, pardon me, I'm going to have to set this down. Okay, these are the ones that have, uh, this is a stick-on LED with adhesive on the back. And then this is the plug that I was talking about. So that's why I had to drill the 3 8 hole is to be able to feed that pretty good size plug down through that hole. So uh, each building will have one of those for its lighting and they're uh, $9.99 that's from uh, Hobby Lobby you can get a little bit better price on them from uh, Amazon sometimes but it comes two in a package and these are the warm white lights and uh, I've got quite a few of those so those I'm gonna have to get more but that's how I'm gonna light the buildings and then these are gonna be for the street lights and the traffic signals that I got um, and I'm gonna be running a bus line for those so uh, that's what that's for. And then these are the switches for those other two switch tracks. Those are going to be AC power running off that other uh, transformer. And uh, I can connect those all in series and power them all because you're not running them all at the same time. So uh, that'll, that'll be what that's for. Then I've also got some uh, Radio Shack tap-ins, which uh, these are really nice for running a bus line. And you can tap in at any point uh, you just put the wire inside in the hole and crimp it closed and then you've got a power feed. So that's what a lot of people use for uh, uh, these layouts is tapping into to an existing trunk line that you can go ahead and uh, feed off of if you don't want to do bus blocks like this or you just need to tap in at some place. But uh, that's going to be uh, definitely a future video. Um, that uh, I'll be making when I do all this uh, wiring. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting uh, tipping the table and having that layout uh, stay on there without falling off and uh, kinda, you know, you know, I'll probably go this way with it since I've got this built here, this shelf, that'll keep it from sliding. So, uh, you know, I'll clamp it down on the other end and uh, this whole thing will tip this way and then I can work under there and get all my wiring done. So that's the plan anyway. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, whether it works or not, I don't know, but that's the plan. So uh, I'll leave you, uh, you guys with a couple of uh, train uh, operation videos tonight. And I just wanted to say, hey, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, there I am in the reflection of the, the glass, <laughs> uh, saying hey, and uh, thanks for subscribing, and uh, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share, and uh, sure appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate the comments, I uh, answer them all, and I appreciate them. If you have any questions at all, or if you have any requests for uh, future videos, uh, I know some of you have said you're following along with uh, some of the things I did, and uh, if you would like me to cover something that I've done or you have specific questions, uh, please let me know. 
uh, I'm kind of running out of ideas for different videos just because I haven't done a whole lot of work here on everything. I've just been, you know, very busy with other things. But uh, uh, like I've said before, I've got to pave that road there. And I think I'm going to use, well, I'm torn between going black pavement up the road there or just dirt or gravel like this. And uh, going to do that upper area, get some grass up there. I did get a tree up there. And uh, some friends have given me some vehicles. Um, there's a little bug and a little camper there, which uh, they're camping under that tree and they, they're part of the cottage there. I've got a really nice convertible there that uh, Mike Olfs gave me. He also gave me this uh, VW Microbus. And let's see, he gave me this really nice, looks like a Chrysler convertible and another little bug there. And I've got a really nice El Camino. Of course, that's out in front of Bob and Dan's because uh, that's got probably got a 440 uh, or let's see, uh, a 460 being a Ford uh, in that nice car there. Got a, uh, looks like a 50, I wanna say 56 Chevy there. Uh, so I really thank you, Mike, for uh, giving me all these really nice vehicles. Let's get him on the road here heading out of town. So uh, yeah, again, if you have any requests or anything you'd like me to talk about or focus in on on my build, uh, let me know in the comments and uh, that might be an inspiration for an upcoming video. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share and I'll see you next update. Take care.